Hey, hey, thank you so much for joining us. Now we are back. Make sure that you have your calendar set and that you lock in with us every Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Today, our special guest is Dr. Leona. Doctor, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me today. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. It, it is really, I think you may be the first doctor. And so that is pretty awesome. And now, where did you or when was it that our paths crossed online? I think it was at least seven years ago, actually. Um, back then, I was going through a divorce. So that's when I was going through a period of life. I was just binging on YouTube videos and somehow you landed in my feed. And um, I was just really amazed at your truth and the approach you came. And it helped me not really for relationship's sake. I wasn't really ready to get into anything after my divorce, but the things that you were saying about how important it is to work on me you know, cause I was broken. I was hurt, but it was something that you said that helped me kind of birth out of the hurt and the pain that I was in. And I was able to turn my pain into purpose. So you were one of those people that I came across that really helped me with part of the journey I'm on. Mm, that's amazing. Now, how long was, was your marriage? How long were you married? The marriage was 13 years mm. and the divorce was finalized in 2017. So I know that was around the time where I started listening to, uh, those types of videos just to kind of understand what happened, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> now, now, before we go forward, I'm, I'm curious about your hairstyle. What, what is it? Is it, is it twists? Is it locks? Is it? These are sister locks. Okay. I have yeah, heard. Yeah, they're sister locks. So they're very natural looking. I used to wear twists and braids. So I've been natural since the nineties, but these are sister locks and I've had them for about nine years. Really? And yeah. so now when you say natural, does that mean that that's all your hair? Yes. All my hair. Wow. <laughs> all is... my hair. It's about waist length. It's a little curly right now, but it yeah. is waist length. I've had them for nine years and I've had no chemicals in my hair since 1996, something like that. Wow. That is amazing. <laughs> and I, I, that caught me because I'm like, man, <laughs> Her hair looks so good. And I know I've seen like different, you know, weave styles, but it just looked a little different. So I'm like, it looks natural. But mm -hmm. then I never really see people, you know, allow their hair to grow and flourish like that. So that caught me off guard. And I wanted to ask you, did you have that hairstyle when you were married? Because 2017... I did have natural hair, so I did more twists. And um, sometimes I did like some, uh, I don't know if you know the terms, tree braids, things like that, but I mainly wore twists. But um, I got the sister locks in 2015 and my divorce was finalized in 2017. So yes, I had them, they were just a whole lot shorter. Mm, and that, that was your exodus. You were, you know, <laughs> moving on in your life. Cause it, it, to me, it just looked powerful. It represents, you know, strength. You know, and I like that his sister's being locked. You know, it's just, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but just it just sounds powerful. And now you're moving forward. You stepped into purpose. And I want to talk about that. Like, what has life called you to do? Like, what, what did in this birthing, was it post marriage or during your marriage? You know, what have you stepped into now? A lot of it has happened way before my marriage, actually, because my first career, I was an engineer back in the 90s. So a lot, I won't go that far. I don't know. We, we don't have, <laughs> we don't have all day, but really my journey started then when I was in corporate America and I knew that that wasn't a fit for me. So my journey, and I guess the term that people use is I'm looking for, I'm trying to find myself. So really that's what happened, but life was really happening for me all along. But when I get more into my story, I want people to understand that it's happening more for me and not to me. So, but now I'm just more intentional about how things happen. So in for a lot of things that break a lot of people like divorce and losing a parent, and I, I've lost both my parents, I've gone through divorce all in the span of 10 years, I've gone through a lot. 
but I, but my superpower is allowing those things like Godzilla, whenever he got, every time it got hit, it got stronger. So I'm just realizing that that was my journey is like things that would tear a lot of women down actually built me up to this powerful person that you see today. Mm. <laughs> I'm being modest, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. And so now are you an author? Yes, I have um, actually a lot of happened in 2015. So not only did I start my locks in 2015, but I wrote my first book in 2015 called A Journey to Healing, Five Stages to Achieving More Freedom in Your Health and Your Life. And that was more about my physical healing journey because um, back then, about 10 years ago, I was 70 pounds overweight. So I was still married at the time. I was going through a lot of depression. I was unhappy, I was stressed. And I had my children at 36 and 40. So a lot was going on that attributed to my weight gain. So once I sat down with myself and it was like, okay, I need to figure out how to get my life back. Here I am pre-diabetic, chronic liver disease. I'm depressed, I'm unhappy. I got these two kids, I'm trying to run a business. And then I, and one day it was around my 41st birthday. I said, I gotta do something. Something has to change. And it was that day when I realized I need to get my health back first so I can get my energy back and be there for my children. So that book was about that journey of what it really took to not only lose 70 pounds, but reverse the chronic diseases that I had and be present, not just as a mother, but also as a business owner. And it's just amazing how I can handle both without having to feel like I'm neglecting one or the other. So I've learned to integrate the two in that process. So that was my first book. And then my second book happened after the divorce. So that was released on my 50th birthday in 2021. And that's called Freedom in Chains. And what's the subtitle? <laughs> Using the power of truth to break the bondage of lies in your life. So that's where I became more intentional about the journey and that was more of the spiritual breakthroughs that I've had in my connection with God that had to come into my life to go from where I was to where I am now. So those books, um, both of those books are about different phases of my journey. Mm. And now what led to your divorce and spiritually, you know, how did you tie that in? Because you become an author at 15 that you know, kind of invokes some some jealousy in people. Like, who does she think she is? Now she's writing this book. She had been an engineer. Now she's a doctor. Now what what she thinks she's doing? And then come 2017, the divorce is final. So what what was that like, you know, spiritually in your life in that time? When I was, I got married in 2004 and I was a totally different person then. So, you know, when people ask me what happened in the marriage, I'm at the point where I'm not angry anymore. It didn't work. I mean, there were some things that broke me, but I don't like to share that part of the story. <laughs> I like to share what I got out of the divorce. So it didn't work. And I was the one that um, wanted to get the divorce. And, uh, and I just realized a lot of it had to do with me. I accept my responsibility and making the choice where, with where I was in the process. So it didn't work out. Um, we did grow apart. I didn't feel like we were married. I didn't feel like we were a team. I felt alone in the marriage. And I just knew that this isn't the type of, I didn't want to just be married just to say I had a husband, you know, <laughs> I could have easily done that. But I really, my idea of marriage was different than his idea of marriage. And I just realized that I had to do that for me. You know, it was more of a spiritual journey that I had to be in a place where I could thrive, where my marriage at the time wasn't a place where I felt like I was growing. I felt like I was really breaking down. Mm. And you mentioned, when you say breaking down, you mentioned like you felt, you went through some depression. And I read once that 15 million women a year go through a depression. And the particular art article that I was reading, it I was reading because I felt like my wife was kind of going through a depression a couple of years back and I just couldn't really understand it. And so, but I couldn't really tell either if that's what it was. 
but with like weight gain and different things that women go through hormones and different, you know, breakouts. So whether it's cystic acne or, you know, hormonal acne, it's a lot of stuff that women go through that we as men don't go through and we don't understand. And she seemed very normal, you know, out and about, but it was just something in her that it, I just didn't, it didn't feel right to me. So I started learning about just women's hormones and bodies. And you mentioned that like you were 70 pounds heavier, you went through some depression. I want to know what do you think played into your depression and what have you found to be the most common factors in other women's depression that you speak to? Yeah, that really ties into how our external symptoms is really a reflection of what's happening internally. So that's how I approach, you know, life now. You know, if you don't like your external world, we got to look internally. But what played a role in my depression? I wish I knew this back then. And maybe my ex-husband at the time didn't know either. We thought differently. I'm naturally a very, not emotional as far as, oh, you know, crying all the time. But if, if I don't like you, you'll know it. If I'm upset, you'll know it. <laughs> you know, if I'm angry, you'll know it. So I'm very, what's the word you say when people know how you feel? You, you don't even have to, I don't have to say anything. People just know. So I guess emotional, I'll just say that. Where he was a more stoic person. I didn't know what he was thinking. Okay, are you mad? No, okay. But if I was loud or something like that, we just didn't get each other. So it was like, I think a lot of that depression was not feeling like I was understood or he tried to understand me. He did, I don't think he realized that men think differently and I didn't understand that men thought differently either. So I believe if men understood how they think is different than how women think and women think differently than men, I think that would save a lot of marriages, but we just bumped heads because no one was trying to understand the other. And I wanted to, I was trying to, I was trying to learn, but you know, sometimes he, he's not the reader and the researcher I am. So it has to happen on both sides. So I think a lot of that depression comes from not feeling heard, not feeling understood. And especially me as a business owner, I'm in the world, I'm fighting, um, you know, that's that, you know, I'm a business owner. It's, you know how it is to run a business and run other people. And then you come home and you just want to uh, just put down the control and just be home. But then I felt like I had to put on another face when I got home. I just couldn't be me. So I think that was a lot of the depression, not being able to be my authentic self in my own home, in my own relationship. Mm. And when you say authentic self, do you mean like passing gas and burp? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I did that, you know, but just, I just want to talk without having to be so careful with my words. Just let me talk without you misinterpreting everything I say. Um, you know, you know, sometimes I just want to come home. I just want to hug sometimes, but then you're barking at me for whatever reason. So it was just a lack of just really getting each other's moods and, and how they, you know, it was just, we weren't. <laughs> so I think being me was just liking the talk because um, I'm very quirky. Um, I'm just very, if I'm watching a movie, I'll laugh, I'll cry. You know, I'm just very animated, okay? And, and sometimes that got misinterpreted to him as, you know, calm down kind of thing. So being authentic, I just didn't feel like I couldn't be my quirky, goofy self in my own home. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, you know, the passing, <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, authentic is just being able to express myself. If I want to cry, I want to feel safe to cry. You know, if I said something, I don't want to be all constantly misunderstood and being like, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. So that was part of it. Mm, I see. That's a that's a great explanation. And I'm glad that you're in tune with your feelings. And, and I think that is helpful for the people as well who are watching this, who are going to work with you and hire you to just kind of know how you operate, where you come from, what you've gone through. And I love that. And there, there are a lot of differences between men and women. 
and it's hard for us to understand each other. And it does cost a lot of marriages because of that. In behavioral science, they have a thing called sidestep the power struggle. And a lot when you just button head, button head, it, it will lead to divorce. And sometimes somebody has to sidestep it and say, you know what, I'm not going to argue about this. I'm not going to nitpick about this. And I'm just going to be the bigger person. And I learned that working in the group home and I've used that in my relationship, you know, with my wife. Now, I wanted to ask you, and this just, you know, going a little deeper into your lifestyle in the sense of what plays a role, the biggest role in your skin and your hair? Because you you say you're 52 or something and your, your skin look like a 12 year old. And so I'm wondering, is it what you're eating or is it what you're doing or is it just genetics? And you just come from this this tribe of people who just age backwards or just look so young for so long. I appreciate that. Yes, I'll be 53 next month. And a lot of it is genetics, but I think a lot of us are genetically predisposed to having good, healthy look. But we can turn those good genes on or off based on our habits. So yes, it's like I have the good genes, but I also enforce those, reinforce those good genes with a good diet and a good lifestyle and good stress management and sunlight and exercise and all that. So I don't wear a lot of makeup. I don't have any extensions. I'm very, um, I'm very health conscious. It's, it's like my world. My world is built around health. And, and um, it's just very important to really realize that. So I was going to say something else. I completely forgot what it was, but, <laughs> but yeah, just having, oh yeah, I remember what I was going to say, because I remember I was looking at an old picture about my oldest son is 16 and we were, I was doing pictures because when I'm doing like content and creating content about my story, he saw a picture of me carrying him when he was two years old and I was overweight and I just, you could just tell I didn't look happy. I had that smile that looked like this, you know, that, that fake smile where the eyes don't change. And he said himself, mom, what a transformation. He actually thinks I look older 16 years ago than I do now. So it's also the place I'm in in my life. So it does matter. But as women, we tend to just get so, um, we have the benefit of being able to cover that with makeup so we can cover it up. But I never never really wore a lot of makeup, but you know, it's just nice to know that all this is happening because of the place that I am now and how I treat my body. So it's, it's a multifactorial kind of thing. I don't know if that's a word. Like you say, it just sound good right there. <laughs> But, but it's a multi-therapeutic kind of thing to really look and feel the way I do. There's no magic potion to it. Yeah. And that is because we always hear, you know, be careful who you marry. And I, I once heard it said by Zig Ziglar, I think he said relationship stress has been studied and found out to be the number one, like worst stress that is worse than family stress or like a death related stress or work related stress. When you looked older at 38 than you do at 52, what do you think was the biggest factor to the state you were in your relationship, your marriage or your job? Woo. Can I say all of them? Because <laughs> think about it. I was married for 13 years. And then about maybe seven years, I don't know the, the data, the timeline, but I didn't have children right away. So maybe I was married in my early thirties. And by 36, I had my first child. I had started my business a few years before that. So I'm married I'm running a business and then boom, the child rolls in. And then after I had the child is when all my health issues surfaced. And in the midst of that, boom, another child. And then in the midst of that, boom, I lost my mother. So, and then in the midst of that, boom, the divorce and then moving and finding a new home and starting over fresh as a single mother. So a lot of that stress came from combination of things. But I think to answer your question, I think it all really, I think the biggest turning point happened at 41. 
So I was already married and I always had the business, but it was throwing in the children because it was something about having the children and me being a mother now and just understanding the whole different responsibility that came to the surface. So by the time the kids came in, I was already just exhausted and depressed and done and really didn't feel like I had the emotional support that I needed. But when I had those kids, I realized, you know, the marriage isn't getting better. The practice is even more stressful now. But now I have these children, what next? So I think that was the moment that sat me down and said, it's time to do something different. Mm. And when you say the practice and because you started a business, what business was it? Yeah, I had a chiropractic business. So I've been a licensed chiropractor for 23 years. Wow. Time flies. It sounds funny out loud. But yeah, I've been <laughs> had a, I'm a licensed chiropractor for 23 years. So I had a, I have a chiropractic and a wellness clinic in outside of Atlanta. Okay. And now the, do you still have the clinic today or have yes, you? Yes, I still okay. do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. And so people who watch this, they can come to your clinic and have you as their chiropractor? Yes, absolutely. They're in the Atlanta area. And I also have a coaching side, life and health coaching side of the business. And I do that in the office and virtually as well. So that virtual business and coaching business was birthed in 2020. Okay. Wow. Now, which one do you love more, being a chiropractor or being a coach? I love both because it, it I, I'm engaged. I have a lot of personal connection with my patients. But I would say where I really let loose and can really just be free to just share my experience and really help those transformations is in the coaching side. Because that's where I get real more intimate with the underlying cause of uh, my client's issues and really tap into what's really holding them back and just seeing those breakthroughs. Where in chiropractic, they just walk out dancing because they feel better physically. But on the coaching side is where I love to witness a lot of the transformations and breakthroughs. Hmm. So now if I came to you and I say, hey, my lower back is hurting, would you crack my back first or have me do an x-ray first or x-ray MRI? I would analyze you first to see what's going on. And then I would send you out for x-rays. Now, that was a trick question now. Because I, I asked you that to make sure you got the right process. Because <laughs> one time I hurt my back, I fell off a skateboard in my house. I was on a skateboard, being funny with my sons. Skateboard flew from up under my foot. I went up in the air, probably three feet in the air, came down on the wood floor in the house and hit my the side of my back. Mm -hmm. And went to a chiropractor, looked like you, sister. She just went to cracking and popping. I couldn't walk out. When I walked, I was when I walked out, I'm limping. I couldn't shower. When I went to wash my behind in the shower, I couldn't reach back. Something was thrown off. And I'm like, this woman just went to cracking me and didn't send me to see what's wrong. She made it way worse. That's why I asked you that, just to see if you had. Yeah, you, oh, yeah. A janky business or <laughs> doing things yeah. the right way. <laughs> now, <laughs> I think I run a pretty good shop. <laughs> to be in it 23 years, you got to be doing something right. And I, yes. yeah, I love that because now our people that's outside of Atlanta, they can come and get their body fixed, get the chiropractor work, but then they can come back or after that, if, you, if, if your session open, sit down and have a coaching session. And you can't beat that. This is the first time I've heard of that. I have a client who is a chiropractor, but she doesn't do coaching yet. Mm -hmm. I think. And she has a health and wellness business. But this is the first time I've heard of someone with an office where they do chiropractor work and health and wellness coaching. That's that's a first of its kind. And I hope we see it more. Now, what type of client is your ideal client? My ideal client is the women between about 40 and 55. And they're like, what's next? What am I going to do? What happened? Where did my life go? Because life, what they say now, life is lifing. 
And then they wake up one day, their kids may be gone, married, parents are gone. It's just a different phase in life. And a lot of women are thinking, you know, I gained this weight. I have no energy. I'm in a job I don't like. I'm divorced. They're just in a place and they just see that they've let their bodies go. And a lot of times it's the weight that gets their attention. They want to lose weight, but it really comes from the woman that's like, you know, my body is falling apart. I want me back. That's what I'm finding the underlying need that they find is like, they want me back. I want the old me back. Mm. So that is my, that is who I market to. I treat men, women, and I treat men and children as well. But as far as who I really connect with, that is, that is them, that they are me and I am them. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Now, where can our viewers get in touch with you at? They can reach me on my website, drleona.com, D-R-L-E-O-N-A.com. And that's where they'll find a lot of resources. Um, they'll find my link to Instagram and they'll find my link to Facebook and YouTube and podcasts and books. <laughs> so that's the hub. So instead of having this long list, they could go to drleona.com and find everything they need about me right there. Awesome. And that lets you know that you're meant to be. The fact that you, you were able to get drleona.com and it was available. You one of a kind. First one to it. Because I always, when I'm starting a business, I'm like, okay, if the dot com is available, that, that's another sign. Yep. Oh, sometimes I still got to go ahead anyways if it's taken, but it's always a sign when the dot com is available that this is meant for you. You're in the right space. You're doing the right thing. And doc, I really love what you're doing i got a messed up back it's hurting me now so i might need to make me a trip up there outside atlanta just because i like your spirit and i like the way you do things and you are authentic everything is just it's flowing and it's coming from a real place real experience you know real pain real loss and to see that the pain and the loss the divorce to see that it hasn't broken you and crippled you and yet you're still building and growing and finding a way to give that right there that's inspiring and i'm sure you'll have a flood of clients from this so i'm excited for you and uh definitely thank you so much for stopping by thank you thank you for having me and what i like to say to listeners is like what my mission is really to help women transform their pain into power so that they can achieve more freedom in their health and their life. That's, so that's my statement. That's amazing. And I love that you are health centered, you know, health focused, because that I feel like is the number one space, the number one area that's holding people back in their lives. I talk about three B's, but that health is just, if we can get that, mm -hmm. so much more will flow from there. So exactly. thank you so much. And to thank everyone you. who has tuned in, make sure you check the description box, visit Dr. Leona's website. She is also a coach, so you can book sessions with her. She's also on mymentor.life. Thank you for that support. But thank you so much. God bless you. And we will talk soon.